In this final episode of the Gold Spot Pens 2020 gift guide, we're pulling out all the stops. To put it in the words of John Hammond, we've spared no expense. I'm going to share with you the year's best pen gifts under $300. Look, in this episode, I know we're gonna be spending big money. For those of you that can afford it, good for you. If $300 is outside of your comfort zone, watch our previous two gift guides that cover the under 50 and under $150 price ranges. That being said, when you're spending more on writing instruments, you wanna make sure you're getting even more value and not needlessly spending on fancy brand names or elaborate packaging. The gifts I recommend here will provide maximum value for the long term. As with the previous two videos, I'll split the recommendations into three levels of pen enthusiasts, the beginner, intermediate, and advanced user. Stay tuned to the end of the video when I recklessly spend other people's money and show you pens to consider if budget is no concern. Okay, so first up on our list is the Diplomat Arrow. Now, this is part of the beginners area of our suggestions which involves something that's simple for anybody to really get into, uh, but yet provide a lot of value and really give you an ample amount of pen for what you're spending on. And I really can't recommend a better pen, I think, to start off with than a Diplomat Arrow because this pen really punches well above its weight. It's machined out of solid aluminum with a fluted tapered shape that looks a lot like a Zeppelin. So the Diplomat Arrow is machined out of solid aluminum and has a fluted tapered shape that looks a lot similar even when you compare the ballpoint versus the fountain pen. Uh, they look almost identical, but you see the ballpoint pen has a twist action. Uh, so this is the ballpoint. And then the fountain pen has a pull off cap, which reveals the nib. The all metal design is anodized in a wide array of different colorful designs. This just happens to be one of the most recent releases, which is the turquoise and has black uh, clip and black trim, especially on the grip section here. Uh, but they're available in a beautiful array of different colors, including this flame color, uh, which actually has, I think it's actually made out of steel because this thing actually feels a lot heavier uh, than the aluminum pens. Uh, so I think that the body casing of this is made out of steel and then torched, uh, flame torched for this uh, sort of multicolored rainbow effect, which is really neat. And it's unique to each pen. And this has also the black hardware that the other turquoise arrow has, but you'd find other ones that also have like a silver uh, finish as well. There's a whole bunch of them on our website. The fountain pen uses a number six size Yovo nib of which there's a version that's a uh, number six stainless steel. And then this one here has the 14 karat gold nib upgrade option. The arrow fills with either an international sized cartridge or converter, uh, which is pretty compatible so that if you needed to switch it uh, with other pens that uses international ink cartridges or converters, you would have uh, your Diplomat arrow as like your starting base point. Uh, and you would be able to then use it with other fountain pens that you would get uses international or uh, cartridges or converters. Besides the full metal construction of this pen and the weight and the feel of it, you also have a few different details of it that really don't come across when you look at a picture of this pen or just see it on a video. And that's really some of the details like this really soft sliding click mechanism that they have for the cap and also the feel of this uh, the threading that's on the barrel here. It just has like a nice sort of high quality overall, just, it just, you could just tell that the details were looked at and cared for by the folks at Diplomat, which is made in Germany. So it's a really nice high quality pen uh, that you really can't go wrong with for the price. And it starts at $132 for the ballpoint, 156 for the fountain pen with a steel nib and $280 for the 14 karat gold nib. And that varies for the finishes as well. So some of them may be a little bit different, but uh, I mean, even when we're looking at 300 and below uh, for a steel nib, 156 is really a great price point made in Germany with a Yovo number six pen, uh, nib. And then if you're talking for a 14 karat gold nib still being under $300, uh, you have money then to be able to spend on some ink, some paper, and then make a beautiful package $300 price range. So whether you're into the fountain pen, rollerball, or ballpoint, the Diplomat Arrow has got something for everybody and fits within your budget. 
So next up on our list, I think pretty much everybody who watches this channel knows I'm a big fan of Leonardo pens. Uh, they are made in Italy and they are manufactured out of solid acrylic resin. So in contrast to the Diplomat Arrows we looked at, these are all completely resin pens. So they're not metal, uh, they just have some metal bands, metal clip of course, and they also contrast well, at least this year, they contrast with the arrows in that they don't use a Yovo number six nib. However, they use a Bach number six nib, of which pen enthusiasts may know the difference. Um, Box and Yovos are made in Germany, but they do vary quite a bit in terms of their uh, writing quality and some of the things that you may look for in a Yovo nib, you won't find in a Bach nib. But a lot of people have their preferences either way, uh, so this is kind of a moot point for a beginner per se, but this pen does offer a lot of advantages uh, that a conventional pen or a starter pen may not have, of which you look at the Momento Zero, and besides being a beautiful pen, and this is the Positano uh, resin, you have the ability to go with a uh, international cartridge or converter, of which the converter is already included, and Leonardo's converter is a little bit different than you would normally see with a standard Schmidt K5 converter in that uh, it has a customized uh, knob that's here that has the engraving of uh, Leonardo's brand mark on the back, which adds just a little bit of extra luxury and has a somewhat functional capacity uh, when you use the pen as like a, as you would, let's say, a piston filling pen and remove the blind cap, actuating the converter uh, using the back of the converter through the back of the pen. So that's a neat little feature that, you know, if you wanted to use it, it's not really like, I guess, like something that a beginner would necessarily be excited about, but it is something that uh, a real pen enthusiast or one that uh, is familiar with cartridge converter pens and piston fill pens would, would be pretty you know, have a fun time with, I suppose. Other than the Italian acrylic, you do have a few other hallmarks of the Leonardo brand in here, which is the Italian uh, wheel clip, which slides in and out of your pocket. Well, clasps through it nicely though when it is attached, but it, it comes out uh, pretty easily uh, when you need it to. Uh, then you have the signature sort of like curved grip that's on here, uh, which is very, very comfortable. I enjoy writing with them a lot because of that grip section. And it's common to the Ferrari model as well, uh, which is very similar to Memento Zero, but just kind of carries a little bit more of that torpedo-like shape uh, with the uh, curved ends, the rounded ends that are here. Um, so it does have still the same grip uh, section and then also converter ability to either fill the pen from the back or as you would a standard cartridge converter pen, fill it from the uh, opening the front section. Back to the conversation about the Bach nibs. They do have number six size Bach nibs uh, installed on them. However, in 2021, they will be changing over to Yovo. Reason being that Yovo generally is uh, better quality control right out of the factory and requires usually no adjustment or no fuss at all. Uh, Bach nibs, even though they are some of the, really the smoothest writing steel nibs that you'll find and have like a little bit more pliability, um, so they're a little bit more softer than a Yovo nib would be, but sometimes they'll have issues with, let's say, baby's bottom or time misalignment. It usually is something that uh, you know, say if you're experienced with pens, you could just do a slight little adjustment, do a little bit of tuning, and then you're perfectly fine. Um, and it doesn't happen to all of the nibs. But if you come across a Leonardo that you're not happy with how it writes, if it does have any hard start skipping issues or uh, anything of the like, um, you're always able to address us and to talk to us about it. We could help you with either exchanging it, repairing it, doing whatever needs to be done to make it right perfectly. Uh, we have tons of Leonardo's that go out every day. We've been selling them for the last over a year or so and have had to deal with some issues here and there. But for the most part, people are loving them. They love them with the Bach nibs. I'm, you know, my, myself, I have a couple of them that are in the 14 karat golds that I really truly enjoy and I'm kind of a little sad that they are going away from Bach, but I understand maybe the reasoning behind it is that they do want to have it be a perfect writing experience out of the box and not have any of those little slight hiccups that may happen. If you're not into fountain pens, the Momento Zero is also available in a ballpoint pen mode, which is kind of like a slimmer type of ballpoint pen in several of the colors 
that you would see with the available in the fountain pen as well. Starting at $135 for the ballpoint pen and $169 for the fountain pen. Most styles though do fall into the $199 uh, price range and for that price you do get a lot of quality. You get beautiful materials, Italian craftsmanship, beautiful option to choose the Memento Zero from Leonardo. Next we have the Platinum 3776 Century. These are classic taper profile type pens. These are cigar shaped style pens. They have a 14 karat gold nib on it. So in terms of our entry into this price point, Platinum offers one of the best values in terms of providing a 14 karat gold nib in these 3776 Century. These pens were designed over several decades to create a design that um, has a classic look and a feel and a shape and size that is just, it provides a, a workhorse type writing experience um, with the fineness uh, of these details and that 14 karat gold nib. The 3776 Century is available in a wide array of different colors. So it has a lot of different PMMA resins or uh, different types of translucent and transparent type resins that are manufactured in Japan. And some of them are just outstandingly awesome, beautiful to look at. They are range in a wide array of colors. This is the Laurel, uh, which is a translucent green. It's appropriate for Christmas, I believe, uh, being that you have like the, the dark evergreen of a spruce tree or a uh, pine tree. And um, it comes with rhodium trims. It has a pretty nice embellished cap band that has the engraving on here as well. It has a Platinum Japan 3776. Uh, and then this is the Nice. This is a, a transparent uh, demonstrator pen and it has like some frosted clear areas here, but it has a pattern that's in, that's pretty much like faceted into this pen that creates a bit more interest than your just standard gem demonstrator. We have, uh, like I mentioned, 14 karat gold nibs of which you could expect the same type of writing quality you would with let's say a Japanese nib in these platinum nibs in terms of the line thinness. So for those of you that don't know, uh, that might be shopping for a beginner. Uh, Japanese nibs tend to run a bit thinner than the European style nibs. So like the nibs we looked at with Diplomat or Leonardo, uh, a platinum nib is going to run a bit thinner in size. So a fine point here is going to be more equivalent to a European extra fine. And also let's say a broad here may be equivalent to the uh, medium point. In a Leonardo. When you choose a nib size, uh, you know, you have to kind of weigh the person's writing preference if you do know it. So if they tend to write a little bit on the smaller side, small, neat handwriting, very slow, methodical type handwriting, you would want to stick to, let's say, a fine point. However, if they have like a pretty like regular flow of writing, write generally large, um, then you might want to opt for either the medium or broad. And also consider too is the feedback. So one of the issues that some people, you know, take issue with is that platinum and sailor nibs, especially since they're so fine when you get to the extra fine or fine, is that they will have a significant amount of feedback. And that's because the, the, the line width is just so crisp and so concise that they need to make that tip of that nib extremely sharp. And that may not be pleasurable to write with for some people. Uh, however, that's what you kind of like take into some, some advice that I'm going to give you in that the thicker line sizes, let's say like a medium or broad, are going to be smoother. So you'd wanna go with those. So the 3776 Century uses a platinum proprietary converter or cartridge of which some models include a converter, some don't. Um, so you might wanna ask um, if you do, do need to purchase a converter separately, it's kind of all over the place. But in general, they do include converters with them. And they also have a proprietary slip and seal cap mechanism, which you could see through this clear demonstrator cap here. It's kind of like a coiled spring around an inner cup that when you put the pen back together, it pushes up against that cup and then that would seal your nib so that it will stay fresh for up to two years actually without dry out. It was something that is part of Platinum's uh, advertising about this particular patented feature is that you could fill the pen up, leave it in a drawer for two years and it should open up and start writing again. And that's from what we've heard from people's feedback is that it's generally true. Even though people don't leave them two years with ink and not use them, 
because I mean, that kind of defeats the purpose of enjoying these pens. So if you'd like to own one of these Platinum 3776 Century pens or gift one to somebody, they start at $175.95. And they do vary based on the style. And there's even limited editions of which that go even higher in price. Um, but it's up to you. They all have that 14 karat gold nib on there. They all have the slip and seal cap mechanism. And they all are the same size. So it depends on where your budget is and what kind of materials you prefer or prefer to give to the person. But there's something here for everybody. This is a great pen, everyday workhorse. So now we're upgrading into the intermediate pen user. And the intermediate pen user already has a baseline knowledge of several different pens they own, like to write with. They don't have to be like very expensive pens, but they want to see where it's at as far as where's the next level? You know, where's the next level? Where can I get a little bit more fancy with the nib styles and also the filling mechanisms? And one of the pens that I have for the longest time just kind of avoided because they were just always going to be around and I was like well you know I'll try it eventually and I'll have it be part of my of my repertoire eventually because this is always going to be there was the Lamy 2000 and this pen impressed the socks off of me when I actually first owned it and and it took me such a long time to cave to it I'm glad that I did because it is a very austere looking just very minimal but yet modern uh, futuristic style pen that was actually produced and invented in 1966. So this pen's been around for a long time, continues to be one of Lamy's most iconic pens in their lineup. So it's been around for such a long time because it just continues to impress new generations of writers uh, with its materials, its craftsmanship, and its design. It's made out of this stuff called Macrolon, which is kind of a combination of fiberglass and resin. Uh, that has a lightweight brushed feel and it just it just feels like a pen that is at the same time is light and just comfortable to hold but yet gives you that impression of something that is out of the future and has a lot of value to it. It's just so impressive just to hold one in your hand and just to feel it and just as, a, as an object, not even just as a pen. It just has like that really nice, beautiful design to it. Very simple. Uh, it doesn't really call attention to itself. And that's why I've avoided it for so long, but I'm glad that I jumped into it. It has a uh, spring-loaded clip, which is pretty easy to clip to virtually anything. It, it kind of opens up pretty nicely over there. And it has a slip cap that has a satisfying click when you close it completely. It has an ink window here because we have a piston filler. So this is the reason why I mentioned that this is gonna be in the intermediate level because this is a piston filling fountain pen as opposed to our cartridge converter filling pens that we mentioned in the beginner level. Uh, and in general, like you pretty much need to know that you're into fountain pens and using bottled ink in order to really recommend and put somebody into that piston filler. What's fun about this pen and one of the reasons why I enjoy it so much is because I like using ink samples and this pen is a champ at being able to get the very last bit of ink out of an ink sample vial because of the fact that it has a hooded nib, which is another nice cool feature about this pen that makes it so distinct from many other fountain pens is that it has this hooded, partially hooded 14 karat gold nib and you have the breather holes right there. So it does reach all the way down to the very bottom of whatever container that you have your ink and can suck it up into this piston fill mechanism, which I think is just so cool. <laughs> I know it's probably funny, but uh, you know, funny for you to, to, to hear that, but like, it's just, it's such a cool feature. This is not only available in the Macrolon finish, but also has a stainless steel model, which is even just more opulent and just streamlined and so futuristic looking. And this is the ballpoint model. So the ballpoint model uses the M16 ballpoint refill. This is a Lamy proprietary type refill cartridge. It has a spring that's in there, which I am trying to, there we go. So this is if you are not a particular fan of fountain pens or you're looking to give something that's a little bit more uh, accessible and you don't know if the person's into fountain pens, but this ballpoint pen does really uh, jumps out at you as like a futuristic, uh, very nicely weighted type ballpoint pen because this is completely made out of brushed stainless steel, has that same uh, spring-loaded type clip and a nice 
uh, strong clicker mechanism. So we're starting at $61.95 for the ballpoint pen. I believe that's in the Macrolon finish. And then $199.20 for the Macrolon uh, fountain pen. And then the stainless steel is available at a significantly higher premium because it's made completely out of stainless steel. So that is the Lamy 2000, beautiful, modern Bauhaus style pen. So next we have the world's most renowned retractable fountain pen. This is the Pilot Vanishing Point Fountain Pen. And it has a convenient click action. And you see one-handed, so it doesn't require me to have to pull off a cap or screw off a cap. Having no cap means that you don't have to worry about if you're posting it or holding it while you're writing. The reason why I would put this as an intermediate level pen as opposed to beginner, even though it's a cartridge converter filling pen, is that it's a little bit trickier to, let's say, fill the pen than it would be with a standard uh, fountain pen. And this is retractable, so you have to be a little bit more concerned about how you're putting this mechanism back together. If you're not going to drop, accidentally drop this whole mechanism, this is the 18 karat gold nib that comes with it. And also the Con40 converter is a little tricky to fill up all the way as well. So it does require a little bit more knowledge, a little bit more nuance than your beginner level pen. Um, but if you enjoy the convenience of a click action type pen, but want the smoothness and the fluidity of a fountain pen, the Pilot Vanishing Point is where it's at because you have here one of the best value 18 karat gold nibs that uh, you'll find in the fountain pen market that will write smoothly and more like, even though it's a Pilot and it's made out of Japan, it does have more of like, let's say a European standard in terms of its line weight. So an extra fine will be like a European extra fine, a fine medium broad uh, will be relatively about the same as you would find with a, a European style type pen. They are available in a wide array of different colors like this uh, classic blue with rhodium trim and they do have uh, nibs that match them too. So this has a rhodium finished 18 karat gold nib. Um, there are some that have the regular gold 18 karat gold nibs and then there's the ones that have the black ionized uh, 18 karat gold nibs like this limited edition here and this is the black Lynx. The limited editions can be a little bit more uh, higher price point but at the same time they're very collectible. So if you wanted to let's say start a collection for your fountain pen enthusiast and order them every year a uh, limited edition pilot vanishing point. That would be kind of a cool idea and then also would just be automatic because every year these pens get released around September, October and they are usually quite valuable especially several years after when they all sell out because there's only 2020 of these made and they go up every year. So 2021's edition will have 2021 pieces made worldwide. So they are available at a higher premium, but a couple years later, it'll probably go up in value in the secondary market. So you have something here that's quite unique in the Black Lynx is that it has this guilloche pattern, which has a really nice glossy, but yet like kind of like a, a textured sort of feel. And then it has the matte black accents on it. So a lot of different styles to match the person that you're buying for or yourself. So I did mention that it uses either the Con40 converter or Pilot proprietary ink cartridges. So it is a cartridge converter pen. It also is able to swap out nibs fairly easily because you could just take out this whole entire uh, nib unit. And we do offer replacement nibs as well. So you could purchase, let's say, a, a variety of different replacement nibs in different sizes. So that way you could switch up whichever nib that you feel like writing with, whether it's an extra fine or 1.0 millimeter stub, and you could just switch them as you'd like to, and they're fairly easy to, to swap in and out. Uh, so they do start at $156 for a standard style type fountain pen, and they do go up. So I believe that the uh, Black Lynx is, is north of 280, I believe. Uh, I don't have that information here right in front of me, but they are a bit higher price point. But like I said, they will most likely go up in value a few years from now. Uh, but they are still one of the best values, uh, especially if you do, if you're not really caring so much about the finish, but you want the writing ability, $156 is, is great for an 18 karat gold nib pen. And next we have another pen from Pilot. This is the Pilot Custom 912. This pen may not look very unique to you. However, it's really not about the pen shape itself more than it is about the nib. This is the FA nib. And this nib is, it needs to be on more pens other than this 912 because it is a flexible 14 karat gold nib and what Pilot did with the 912 collection was just say, you know what, let's make a very standard looking 
pattern that's elegant, understated, very classic, has the flattened ends and a, and a very plain sword looking clip and a band here, a uh, nice decorative band. The Custom 912 collection is available in extra fine, soft fine, FA, which is the pen that I'm holding here, the Waverly Music and Stub Nib. They use a Pilot Con 70 converter, which is a pump action type converter, and it fills up with a decent amount of ink. It's a lot better than the Con 40 converter, which you find in most other Pilot pens. Uh, it does hold a lot more ink than, than those pens, and it's a lot easier to use as well. So it's a lot easier to get like a full fill of ink with a Con 70 converter. And you would need a lot of ink with this pen because it's going to lay down a lot of ink if you decide to use the flex uh, capabilities of it. So it is really for, let's say, an intermediate level user because of the fact that you have something other than just the normal extra fine, fine, medium, broad, round nib sizes, um, that you have this flex nib ability, you have a music or a stub to provide line variation. Waverly also provides that line variation as well. And that's really the name of the game here is to provide just a little bit extra something to the writing experience through the nib. And a lot of people really enjoy this. I enjoy this and I recommend this pen time and time again for somebody who's looking for one of the best flex nibs that you could find as in terms of like being able to keep up with the line weights and also the flexibility of the nib. It's got great snapback. It has a very fine line where you don't flex it. So you could write with this perfectly normally as you would, let's say a fine nib, but then you could decide to be like, oh, I want to create a little bit more of embellishment. I want to put this header or sign my name and I really want to use that, that line variation on there. So then you could just press a little bit and those tines open up. They snap back pretty quickly and, uh, and the the feed does keep up with it. So some people find that, let's say if they flex a lot or if they flex really quickly, that the feed may not be able to keep up with it, but there's a place called Flexible Nib Factory that allows you to purchase an ebonite feed that you could then swap out the feed that's on this pen. Then that would create a, a much uh, richer flow to be able to keep up with. But a lot of people, and I recommend this, is that try it with just the normal pen itself. Don't go customizing it just yet. If it works to what, how you use it, then that's perfect. But don't go crazy buying like all these different attachments and feeds and things like that to try to upgrade the, the writing ability if it works for you to begin with. This pen, even though there are other flex nib options available on our website that are much more expensive, this pen is really affordable. It's mostly because of the fact that it's a very plain, you know, resin type finish, but it's all about that nib and this, uh, pen goes for $223.95 is on sale uh, and I would strongly recommend it to anybody that's looking for a very unique writing experience. So now we're in the advanced level. So this is the level of pen collector that they always get what they want. They go all, all crazy for new releases, limited editions, and just normally buy whatever pens that they want and they have a very, very particular taste. So what your objective to do for them is then to let's say support by purchasing other items that they may not think of when they're let's say purchasing a, a new set of pens or a new limited edition or whatever have you. So first thing we could look at was what I pulled all of these pens from which is a Laban pen box. This pen box allows you to protect and proudly display all size of pens in your collection. It's a wooden uh, finish. It's got a very nice dark luster to the wood that's on here. It's got felt line uh, pen slots so that you could hold all of your pens and that they're not touching or banging up against each other. Not only does this box hold all of your pens safely, it also functions as a beautiful desk accessory because it has a clear top as you see here. You could put this on the side on your desk and then be able to look at all of your beautiful pens as you write or do whatever you do on your desk. It holds uh, quite a bit of pens. So you have, this is the 18 pen case. They are available in other sizes. So there's one that's available in 10, um, which does not have the drawer. This has a drawer. There's also one for 30 as well. So if you have a really big collection, you have uh, the 30 pen option to go to. Uh, and they do start at 159.95 for the 10 pen case. Then you have, this is the 215.95 for the 18, and then 247.95 for the 30 pen case. This is a beautiful looking, elegant way to display your pens and to keep them safe, keep them out of uh, harm's way when you throw them in pen cups or in a drawer and allows you to display them uh, so that you enjoy them even though you're not using them. And that's really what it's about is that it's about creating a, you know, a nice space for your pens to exist even though they're not in your daily rotation.
So next I have something that kind of scares me a little bit. This is the Leuchtturm 1917. This is the Some Lines a Day journal. It's a five year book that is dedicated to the writer slash journaler that um, will keep up with something every day for five years. And that kind of commitment is just a little, it makes me a little anxious. And that's why I would say that this is a good advanced level type gift because you have to know that this person is like a serious writer and wants excuses to use their pens every day and this is a perfect excuse to use your pen every day. So each page, and there's 365 pages, each page is broken out into five years. So you would have uh, five horizontal lines and you would have two zero and then you could fill in the year. So for example you would start with two zero two zero and then you would write down the whatever happened during the day. And it's not that much, so it's not a lot of space that you need to. Just write a few sentences of what just happened, and then you keep going, and then years later, you'd be able to look back and be like, as you're filling out the day's entry, you'd be looking back and seeing what you did one year ago, two years ago, three years ago, and being able to like just look at it and just say like, oh, well, that was kind of cool. I did this this day last year, or this day two years ago, and just seeing like, what your habits or your state of mind, uh, some of the things that you were accomplishing, that sort of thing. It's, it's pretty cool to be able to look back and see that in writing, um, you know, as opposed to it being lost somewhere in Facebook or Twitter or whatnot. So the 80 GSM paper handles most fountain pen inks and, and whatnot. So anything that you could write on it, you pretty much can handle on this 80 GSM paper. It also has a page marker and a gusseted pocket on the back uh, cover. Uh, so you could throw in, let's say, movie stubs or do people go to movies anymore? I don't even know. Uh, but uh, but like anything that you might want to throw in that would be part of the memories of this book, you could throw them in that pocket. It's $26.95 and available in a variety of different uh, color styles to match your, uh, your personality. So it is intimidating, I will admit. And, uh, and I actually think that this would kind of be a fun gift uh, to get from my family because I have kids that are developing, they're getting into writing and they're doing a lot more with schoolwork these days. And it would be fun, I think, as a collaborative project to do with your family and to, and to then like have anybody write the day's entry or you could switch and take turns. And then that way you have multiple perspectives throughout the years and make it a habit, just keep doing it. It's a fun idea, but it is quite intimidating to start, I will admit. So next I have the smallest suggestion I will make, which is these little guys right here. These Colorverse mini ink bottles are only five milliliters. However, for the budget that you could afford, we're talking 300 or less, you could buy nearly the whole entire collection here. And there's quite a few different colors to pick from, uh, including this nice set here. It's a three pack set. And, uh, and Colorverse has a wide array of different colors, including sheen, shading, or shimmery, glistening inks. Each bottle does come with like a little pipette. So it's a little bit trickier, and this is the reason why I would put this in the advanced column, is that it's a little bit trickier to extract the ink from these little tiny bottles. And you kind of have to be adept with your pen knowledge and your pen filling uh, ways in order to be able to do that. So uh, one other thing I might recommend with it is let's say getting the Ink Miser Ink Shot Inkwell, um, which is like a little tapered, I should have brought one out with me, but um, it's a little tapered device that you would use. It's made out of plastic and that you would pour the ink into and then you would fill your pen up from the little cup that's uh, uh, from the ink miser. But these are fun. Um, these allow you to try a wide array of different inks. Otherwise you would have to buy a whole entire pack of ink for. Um, let's say for example, this cat, this glistening cat color, you would have to buy Schrodinger and cat, which would cost you about like $33 to buy the two pack uh, bottle set. And you would get only three times as much ink with the cat because it would be 15 milliliters. So this five milliliters, even though it's 650, is worth a lot more because you don't have to buy the full set of ink to get this particular color. So that's where really you would get a lot of value. Warped Passages is another one because um, the two packs of ink, sometimes it would have the larger ink would be one color and then the smaller 15 ml bottle would be a separate color. And the only way you would get that 15 ml is if you bought the full 65 plus 15 pack. You could bypass that by purchasing these little uh, sample bottles here. 
you get a whole bunch of them, the perfect stocking stuffers for pen enthusiasts. And you know, if you buy like a wide array of them, guarantee you're probably not gonna go into all of the colors that this person has that you're gifting for. You're probably gonna give them some that they haven't tried before and expand their horizons. I would particularly pick, because I enjoy using color versus inks, I would pick Antimatter, Extra Dimension, uh, Gravity Wave, Andromeda, and Crystal Planet. I think those are inks are real nice. Um, they have some unique properties to them that you won't find with any other fountain pen inks on the market. And uh, they're just fun. So $6.50 per 5ml bottle, available in a wide array, and you can see swatches on goldspot.com. So if you thought that wasn't enough ink, to select from. We also have these 10 ml bottles of JR Bond, which are available in 35 different colors and have a quite different palette than let's say the Colorverse inks do. So they're more on the end of like, they're, they're lightly saturated, which some of them are, um, but uh, they have a wide array of different colors and these uh, inks have been around for quite some time. So they have a long history. They work very well with fountain pens and uh, they are, th these are some really adorable looking little bottles. They have the full bottle label. So this is the kind of label that you would see on a 30 ml bottle. The colors I would pick from this set are Eclatus Saphir. I'm gonna butcher the names of these things, by the way. So Eclatus Saphir, Blue Pervenque, which is this one. Uh, Posir de Lune, which is this guy here. Uh, Café des Illes and Rouge Granat, which is this one here. They're particularly nice colors. I've used them before and really enjoy them. They're quite unique and I would recommend those to if you're looking for just a different variety of colors to choose from with a J. Herban. So these are a nice variety of colors. They're $6 each for the 10 ml. So actually less expensive than the Colorverse but they give you double the amount of ink. So it's a good selection to choose from. And like I said, for the budget, if you're looking just to buy ink, you could buy pretty much the whole entire collection and uh, really wow the person with a stocking stuffer that's full of different inks. Last but not least, we have the good old standby of gift giving, the Gold Spot gift card. Now, yeah, gift card, it's not that personal. It doesn't really require a lot of research and whatnot, but hey, there's a couple of benefits here that you don't see right away. And one of which is that we actually offer a physical gift card. So let's say if you're ordering things for yourself, you could order gift cards physically and then be able to give them in, let's say a card or, uh, or just hand them to the person. They have, a, they have a certain code on the back that you can use exclusively at goldspot.com. And uh, it can fuel people's passion for pens that way. Or if you're doing this last minute, or you know, are not trusting the mail system to send out cards and whatnot, you wanna send a digital card, we also do that too. So what this card shows not only is that you know that this person is a pen enthusiast and that you want to satiate their lust for fountain pens and inks and pen refills and ballpoints and journals and everything else, but that you also have good taste and that you are a supporter of small business. So now we're throwing caution to the wind. We've said there's no budget, I don't care, I'm spending as much as I want to. You landed a giant inheritance, you have a check that you didn't expect to receive in the mail, and you just wanna go crazy. So one of the things I would recommend that's beyond the $300 budget, uh, first thing I would recommend that is, is the Pelican Souverain 800 or 805 in a special edition. Uh, this is considered by many people to be like a grail worthy pen uh, because it has a generous size. It has an 18 karat gold nib, which also has a very generous size. And it also is available in usually a decent amount of finishes at any given year, but the special editions tend to be collector's items. So right here I'm holding the brown black, which is like a pinstripe brown cellulose acetate barrel uh, with fine stripes going all around the barrel here. It's got some really nice looking gold trim that are on here and the precious resin that's on the blind cap and the section and the, the cap here 
our very dark brown resin as well. And just all together, uh, the, the 800 or 805, 805 meaning the version of the pen with silver trim as opposed to gold. So this is an 800 being that's gold trim. These are some of the most beautiful, well-made pens that we carry. They are also pretty dearly priced. So they start at 607.95. Sometimes we do have sales on them. So this is one of those cases where you wanna be signed up to our email newsletter list or weekly dip and everything so that you could see sometimes when these uh, special editions go on sale, usually at the end of the run. Um, so we did do a promo on the brown black before. Uh, we've also had uh, specials on blue dunes. Um, Ocean Swirl actually was one that was about two years ago, I believe, that uh, the pens now, they were selling, I believe, originally for about six, $700, but now uh, even a used one on the secondary market's going for above $1,000 because this is a style that was gorgeous. It had like a dark teal uh, chatoyant sort of finish and uh, it was all made of Italian acrylic. This one, however, has the cellulose acetate uh, around the barrel. It's a piston filling mechanism of which the piston filling, uh, the actual mechanism itself is made out of brass to add a little bit more weight to this uh, nicely sized pen. So it does feel like an ample luxury instrument in your hands. And sometimes Pelican makes uh, rotten finish pens or uh, macchie styles um, that incorporate rotten in the design that are made by Japanese artisans. They're hand painted and exquisitely detailed. And those can go sometimes in the thousands of dollars. So if you really wanna go crazy, go for one of those editions. Although I don't know how I would feel about being able to take that pen out and inking and writing with it, with it being such a exquisitely hand painted item. Their 18 karat gold nibs are some of the wettest and smoothest nibs on the market. They are Pelican proprietary nibs. Saw these guys getting made in Germany and they are made using traditional machinery um, that have probably been around for decades. So they do them the old style way. No lasers or any sort of advanced automated equipment. It's very, very much a handmade process to make these nibs. And uh, they're usually available in extra fine, fine, medium, or broad. And you can unscrew the whole entire nib unit from the section so that in case you needed to do some heavy duty maintenance inside the uh, barrel here, you could access the barrel and clean it out. But you wouldn't really have to do that uh, so much, maybe like once every several years or so. Uh, but this pen is meant to be an heirloom pen, a pen that will last for a lifetime and certainly worth the extra expenditure, especially if you get one on sale. Now I told you before, I was a big fan of Leonardo and one of the things that attracted me to the brand initially was the fact that they used celluloid for their limited editions. This is the Furore in the Abyss Celluloid. It's a very deep blue and has some tones of gray in it. And you can see as I'm turning it in the light, it catches the light in such a way that shows its luster and the depth of the color of this pen. It's a very, very striking pen. Um, it is the same size as the standard Furore that I showed earlier. However, it has a 14 karat gold nib uh, as opposed to the stainless steel nib that's on the standard Furore. Um, it is a Bach nib as well, and it has an ebonite feed. So people familiar with the Leonardo brand uh, recently would know that they manufacture the ebonite feeds for their Grande uh, collection. However, they did do it previously on their limited edition. So um, this does have an ebonite feed of which the benefit is that it provides uh, a more ample amount of ink flow, um, which really leads to a beautiful ribbon of ink on the paper, especially if you go with a, a nib like this stub here. This is a 1.3 millimeter stub. And I, I could tell you from experience writing with my Leonardo that I have that has a 1.3 stub, it is a gusher. It will actually go through this entire uh, piston fill reservoir in a ridiculously short amount of time compared to other piston fill type pens just because of the fact that it just has such a, a beautiful flow to this pen. So like I said, this is a piston fill. So it's a very rare uh, Ferrari in that the Ferraris are not piston fills. And this particular edition is only available in 100 pieces. So it's a very, very small batch of pens. It was actually one of the first um, editions that we carried from Leonardo last year. Uh, we still do have a few pieces left, but it's worthwhile to note that you should really keep track of when Leonardo drops new limited editions because um, despite the fact that this pen is has a gold nib, ebonite feed, and is made out of celluloid, which is usually a really expensive material on its own, 
it's listed for 789. So you might be saying, oh, hey, that's expensive. Okay, I understand. However, if this was a Monte Grappa pen, we'd be looking at a pen that would be $1,200. So I still think that this is a really great value and it's, and it's made uh, to impeccable detail and just looks great in hand. Gold trim looks awesome on this too. And, uh, and overall, I, I would always jump on these small limited runs because of the fact that it, when they do eventually sell out, that they'll, be, uh, they'll go up in value uh, as the years go on, especially with the fact that celluloid itself is a very rare material that not many pens are being made out of. So there is a higher demand, I think, for the rarity of celluloid, especially Italian celluloid that looks this gorgeous. So next on our dream list, we have a pen that many people find to be on their list as a grail pen, which is the Visconti Homo Sapiens. The Visconti Homo Sapiens is typically a black pen. It's made out of basaltic lava. However, their limited editions, and since we're spending a lot of money, we're buying the limited editions here, um, they're usually made out of this acryloid material that combines translucency and chatoyance and just has a beautiful, vibrant color. This is the Blue Lagoon style, which has aqua and green and teal and it just looks so very attractive and alluring, has swirls all over the place, has the swirls mostly through the grip section, the end cap doesn't have any translucency, but the, the cap does have a little bit towards the opening of the cap here, um, has palladium trims, the, the iconic uh, Visconti bridge arc clip with Visconti branded on both sides there. And it still has the 18 karat nib that's on here. So this is the 18 karat gold Bach nib that Visconti recently went away from because they're now manufacturing a 14 karat in-house nib. However, these um, still have the 18K nibs. Uh, some other models that we have still have the 18K nibs. Um, and this, if you recall, if you know your Visconti, actually was a transition from when they manufactured these pens with 23 karat palladium nibs. So they're doing a lot of changes. They're trying to improve upon the quality of their nibs and still being able to keep the price point lower, um, even though this is not a low price pointed pen by any means of the imagination. Um, this has a hook safe lock cap, which comes off with a short little twist and push. It also has a little bit of that same, sort of that uh, similar type of mechanism that the slip and seal cap mechanism has where it's, or it's kind of spring loaded. So you can kind of feel that springiness as you put the cap on and off. So this is a power filling mechanism, which works basically the same way as a vacuum fill system. So if you're familiar with the Custom 823, it works in the same fashion uh, where you would have this one stroke filling mechanism and you would push down with the, with the nib inserted in a bottle of ink, of course. And then once you get down to all the way to the end where it kind of clicks, then that's when the ink would get sucked into the barrel and you could control the flow of the ink by screwing the blind cap uh, on and off. So if you need to access more ink into the pen, you would then unscrew this blind cap and allow ink to flow into the reservoir. And then if you want to close off the reservoir, if you're not using the pen or traveling with the pen, you would then screw it completely shut. And that would allow, uh, that would prevent any undue uh, burping or leaking of the nib. Um, let's say if you are changing air pressure changes or any sort of heat changes that are going on in the environment. And this pen also features on the cap has the My Pen System medallion. So as a Visconti uh, V medallion that's on here, this could get magnetically removed so that you could put, let's say your birthstone or a pair of initials on there. You can customize this whichever way you'd like. We have a few of those options available on goldspot.com so you can purchase that in addition to the pen to be able to customize it and make it your own. So these styles are usually available in less than 100 pieces made worldwide and tend to sell out within about like, I would say maybe like one or two years depending on the particular style. So this is probably one of the more popular ones. We still have available in stock um, and they start at $920 that's on sale. They are a bit pricier, um, but you do get a really nice presentation that comes with it. A card comes with it, uh, that certificate of authenticity, that these uh, pens are, are truly gorgeous and are some of the most highly sought after grail pens um, that are in the market because they do represent that like beautiful sort of Italian made aesthetic um, and the uniqueness of the power filling system and the, the overall, the, des the design, the grand shape of the Homo sapiens uh, just really, you know, captures the imagination 
and uh, provides a wonderful writing uh, pen that would be the crown jewel of your collection. So I hope to deliver the goods when I say that I'm going to go real crazy in this above $300 price range and, uh, and really spend your money in a most lavish way possible. And when I thought about that, I said to myself, you know what, Rodden needs to be part of this discussion. And really one of the prime manufacturers that produce this is Namiki, which is also shared by Pilot. So Pilot and Namiki are the same company and Namiki is their premium line. It is a lineup of pens that are handmade. They're made by Japanese artists and they provide some of the most gorgeous, like out of this world details that you will only see on these type of pens. Uh, this is the Yukari and this is the Shooting Star, uh, which incorporates abalone shell in a way that it just is just absolutely mesmerizing. It's such detail and craftsmanship that's involved with uh, producing these pens. Rodden has this iridescent rainbow effect that when done in this tasteful sort of manner and also putting like gold dust and things like that on there, it just looks amazing. It's, it's a pen that you might stare at more than you write with. It just, it just is such a gorgeous pen, but you can write with this pen. This pen does come with a number 10, 18 karat gold nib. It's a pilot nib that, uh, as, as you know, when you write with pilot nibs, if, if you're familiar with them, they are uh, some of the best quality controlled nibs, uh, hardly have any problems, and they're very smooth, very good quality type nibs. This particular pen is filled by a Con70 converter or pilot proprietary ink cartridge. And each individual pen is actually signed by the Japanese artist. Um, so you'll see on the barrel there, that's the signature of the artist. And it's just, it's just a mesmerizing pen. Uh, and this is an example really of this particular type of price range. When you're talking a pen that's of this value, which is $2,400, you're talking about a handmade hand detailed pen that was made. It's a truly one of a kind type pen. It is on a completely different realm of pens than everything else that we've looked at because it was like individually cared for uh, by an artist, sometimes for months, because sometimes we'll purchase uh, Namiki pens, uh, particularly these rotten finishes that will take months for them to get fulfilled. Uh, so usually when we have these, they don't last very long and then we're waiting another few months for another batch of them to come in because these artisans are working uh, tirelessly on each individual pen, manufacturing them and then creating a work of art on the pen. Um, so truly a different type of strata of pen and that's where you would see the higher, the highest of high price points is because of the fact that you have that individual attention and you have virtually a functional piece of art in your pocket. You can find links to all the pens and accessories we mentioned in the description below. If you have a great fine writing gift idea that I missed, put it in the comments. I'd love to read all your thoughtful suggestions. Thank you for checking out this Gold Spot gift guide video. If you'd like to see more fun fine writing videos, hit the subscribe button to stay informed about all the latest and greatest in writing instruments. Stay inky, my friends. Take care. <music>